I'm Troy Hurd with Cedar Creek Dulcimers, and I'd like to welcome you to Mountain Dulcimer Basics, your quick guide to playing. On behalf of all of us here at Cedar Creek Dulcimers, I'd like to thank you and also to congratulate you on your purchase. And I know you'll find just as we have that with, even with no prior musical history or knowledge, with very little effort, you're going to have a lot of fun playing your mountain dulcimer. Well, the way we've set up the lesson in this, the format, is we've, we've set it up in sections for you. So after you watch it the first time, if there's just certain sections you feel like you need to go back over again, you don't have to watch the whole lesson to get to them. And you can either go to the scene selection part on the uh, title part of the menu and, and select the certain scene or the, the certain segment of lesson you want to do over again. Or if you just fast forward, there will be little headings there to guide you to let you know uh, what's coming up next. Uh, it'll be broken up in segments such as like uh, getting started, uh, playing our first song, adding some rhythm to our strum, and so forth. But anyway, let's get started. Okay, just a few things you'll need to know before we play our first song. First of all, tuning. Now, if you're just off playing by yourself, you don't even have to know what your notes are. All that's important is you know that you're in tune with yourself. So what you do in that in that case is put your bass string just wherever you think it sounds good. That's the biggest string. If it's already at a place where it sounds good, just leave it where it's at. Then you go down to the four space on the big string. One, two, three, four. Whatever sound that makes, that's the sound that you want to tune the other three to match. The first three are all the same note, so tune them all to that one pitch, and we're in tune with ourselves. Now, if you're playing along with other people, then it is important to know what notes you really are tuned to. Like, for example, in the back of the beginner book that comes with your dulcimer, he's teaching you how to play with guitar and banjo players. And if you do play in jam sessions with guitar and banjo players, you're going to find that the key of G is one of the best keys to tune to. So then, if you were doing that, you would tune your big string to a G, which when you went to the fourth fret, that would make the other three all Ds. So then you would have D, 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 G. And, uh, and then that way your G will match the G on the guitar, the banjo, or whoever else you're playing with. Or if you do join a dulcimer club, you know, you just find out what notes they like to tune to and you tune to them and play along. Now, you can use other instruments to tune in. Like if you have a piano, for example, and you was tuning up to G, you, this would, you would hit the G below middle C and that would be the G. Or if you're playing with a guitar, it's the same G as a guitar as well too. And for example, these three would all be the D above middle C if you're using a piano. Now, if you ever want to get real lazy about tuning, the electronic tuners are great. They take all the guesswork out of tuning because basically what it is, is you pluck the string and it tells you what note it heard. So it lights up a B and you want to be a D, you keep cranking until the D comes on. Now, we're going to have a whole separate lesson devoted to just learning how to use an electronic tuner. Uh, so if you were interested in that, uh, you can go to that section and watch how to tune with an electronic tuner. Now, if, you're, if your dulcimer sounds good with itself, that's just fine. You know, if it's in tune with itself, that's all that's important. If you would like to play along with me, the notes I am tuned to is my big string is tuned to an E. The other three would all be Bs then, as in boy. So we have three Bs and an E. When I'm playing by myself, I don't like to tune real high, I don't like to tune real low, I just like to put it at a pitch that just sounds pleasant to me, and this seems to be a pitch that just sounds good to me. So if you'd like to play along, those are the notes you can tune up to to play along so our notes will match each other. Okay, next, how to hold your dulcimer. Now, just for the lesson purposes, I'm going to be playing it on a table, so it's a little bit easier for us to film. And if you do like playing it on a table, that's all right, too. Now, most people will sit down and put it across their lap. And if you have trouble when it's on your lap, if you have trouble with the dulcimer sliding, you can use this uh, rubberized, rubberized shelf liner uh, that you can get at Walmart. 
uh, or just any convenient place like that. And it's, it's what they usually put in the RV shelves, keep the dishes from sliding. Well, if you put a little patch of that on even just one of your knees, it holds it like a magnet, you know, and keeps him from sliding around. Uh, little strips of leather work great as well, too. And some people like to play on a stand, or some people even like to use a strap. And in that case, what you would do is we would put a little guitar strap button on the end of your dulcimer. And then over here, we would put another guitar strap button where you would use the guitar strap and while you're sitting down then the strap would hold it around your waist to keep the instrument from sliding around so however it seems to work best for you that's the way to do it there's no right or wrong it's just what works best for you okay holding our pick now there's different sizes of picks big little thick thin we give you a variety of them with your dulcimer so you can try different ones out and to see what works best for you now a standard guitar pick has a has a wider end on the one end and a pointier end on the other end and personally, that's what I just like to use as a standard guitar pick. So we want to hold on to the bigger end of it and, and kind of come down close to the point of the pick. Uh, that way you don't have a whole lot of pick. The more pick we have showing, uh, the, more, the more pick sound you're going to hear as you're playing. So you want to get down up close on it, kind of choke up on it. Not only gives you a better grip on your pick, but there's less pick noise as well too. Okay, now strumming with your pick. Now, it doesn't matter where you strum. Um, I always say anywhere from the numbers on down. Uh, just wherever it feels, the first thing we want to worry about is just strum where it feels comfortable to you. Now, you will get different tones, and later on you may decide for certain songs you want to strum in different areas. Like, for example, if you strum down in this cutaway area, you're going to get a little brighter sound. If you strum up more around the sound holes, it's a little softer, mellower tone. So say, like on Amazing Grace, you might want to strum around the sound holes because it gives you that mellower tone. And you're doing a little livelier tune. Uh, you know, Wildwood Flyer, you might want to strum down in the cutaway area to give you a little more of that punchy sound as well. And it doesn't even matter what direction. Now, when I first started strumming, it was the most comfortable for me to strum away from me when I started. But over the years of teaching people, I found out there's a lot of people it feels more comfortable to them if they strum towards them when they start out. So you try it both direction and see which works better for you, whether it's strumming away or whether it's strumming towards you. Okay, now when it comes time to playing, in case you don't know how dulcimer is set up, you strum across all your strings. But when you go to play a song, the first two strings is all we actually have to chord with our finger. That's the reason why they stuck those first two close together, so one finger is all we needed to play our song. So over here, it's like sitting there just picking out one finger songs on a piano. But it's got those drone strings. So now when we add those drone strings in with our pick, it sounds like we're doing more than playing a one finger song. And since it was just one line to play, uh, it made it real easy to come up with a number system to play by. So all your dulcimer books are going to be like this little sample card that I got right here. They're all going to be play by numbers. And so what we basically do with that is, is we hold the number and then you just give a strum each time you see the number written down. Now the starter book that comes with your dulcimer, it's done just like our little card here, just numbers and words. Uh, the guy that wrote that particular book, before he played dulcimer, he never played anything. So that's what he was hoping to do, inspire people like him who had never played music to reassure that no musical skills were required to know how to play dulcimer. So all the tunes are just numbers and words. Now, most of the other writers, when they wrote their books, they went ahead and did both, uh, the numbers and the notes. So the numbers are still there for people like me who want to continue to play by the number system, but the notes are included as well. So if you are a music reader and you want to use the notes, you can. So you're still not required to be a music reader when you use the other books. They're just not going to hold it against you if you already are. All right, that's pretty much all we need to know to get started. So let's get our dulcimers ready, and we're going to play our first song. The song I've selected for us to play is an old tune called Boil Them Cabbage Down. I always say we stole this song from the fiddlers because it, not only is it pretty much every fiddler's first tune, but when a fiddler wants to show off, they'll often play this song because it allows you to do a lot of ad-libbing. And once you know the song for yourself, I encourage you to do the same thing as well, too. 
Remember, we never make mistakes when we're playing dulcimer. We only make new arrangements. So now, to make it easier for you to follow along, we're going to change the camera angle uh, to switch it to where it gives you the same perspective as you're looking at your own dulcimer. Okay, boil them cabbage down. First of all, we're going to start at space number five. One, two, three, four, five. Now, what we want to do is we want to give one strum each time the number's written down because that's our timing. So we start at five and we strum four times. One, two, three, four. Now we're going to move up to number six. And again, strumming four times. One, two, three, four. Back to five. Two, three, four. Now down to four. Two, three, four. Back up to five. Second line. Three, four. Now six. Two, three, four. Now here we just have two fives, two fours. Five, five, four, four. Then we're going to finish off at three. Okay, that was just a little introduction to get you familiar with the song. Or if you, if you want to, you can actually take and pause this real quick and write those numbers down if you're not able to see them real good off the camera. But if you're ready to go on, we're going to play the tune now. That was just a little warm-up, so we're going to play the tune a little more up to tempo. So we're going to start at number five. We're going to go through this song three different times um, just to give you the field so you've got plenty of time to get into it here. So, okay, one, two, we're going to get ready to start here. So one, two, ready, start. Five, 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 six, three, four, five, 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 four, five again, three, four, six, two, three. Now two fives, two fours, down to three. Okay, do it again. This time I'm not going to call them out. Back at the beginning, five. All right, very good. Okay, that was Bowl Them Cabbage Down. Now, that was just a little introduction to the song to get you to learn how to play it so you can get the song memorized and, and get it in your head. And at this point, if you feel like you still need to, keep playing it over and over again. You know, keep watching that segment over and over until you can get to where you're playing the song to where you don't even have to hardly think about where your next note change is. Well, once you get to that point and, and you feel like you're comfortable playing the song and you've got it down pat, you know, you're not even having to look back and forth at the music that much. Well, now we're going to add a little rhythm to the strum to kind of jazz up the song just a little bit. At this point, what we've been doing so far is just giving one strum for each number. It's been one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Well, what we're going to do when we add an extra beat in there, I call it an and beat. So when we're strumming the one direction, that's our one, two, three, four. Well, if we want to throw in an extra beat in between coming the other direction, that would be our and beat. So if we was adding the extra beat in this particular song, it would be like this. One, two, three, and four. In between three and four strum, we add an extra beat coming the other direction, and that's our and beat. So now instead of just sounding like this, it'll have a little more rhythm to it. And four, one, two, three, and four, one, two, three, and four, one, two, three, and four, and so forth. So basically, that's all that little extra rhythm is. It's just adding an extra beat. Now, you can add in the extra beat wherever you want. Instead of at the end of the measure, like I was doing, the one, two, three, and four, you could add the extra beat at the beginning if you would prefer. So it'd be like one and two, three, four, one and two, three, four. One and two, three, four. One and two, three, four. 
So whether you add in the extra beat at the beginning, the end, it doesn't matter. It's just whatever works for you. Probably the only thing we wouldn't want to do is add an extra beat between every strum. It might sound just a little too busy if we did that every time, you know. So usually I have a tendency to just add one extra beat in towards the ending of it. So that's what we want to work on right now, is just practicing that three and four. One, two, three, and four. One, two, three, and four. And just get to the point, three and four, where you can do that without even thinking about it. Two, three, and four. And, and remember, if you do in add an extra rhythm here or there, or you miss the and beat on this you know, measure, well, that's all right, don't worry about it. it. It really doesn't matter. That's just for your own flavor anyway. So don't worry about it. If you miss an extra beat, just keep on a plan, you know. So like I say, we never make mistakes. We just make new arrangements to an old song. So anyway, let's play our new tune. And again, if you want to, you can pause it at this point, work on your one, two, three, and four. But if you feel like you're ready, we're going to go ahead and play our song all over again. But this time we're going to add that rhythm to it. So we're going to start off at number five. Five, two, three, and four. Six, two, three, and four. Five, two, three, and four. Four, two, three, and four. Five, two, three, and four. Six, two, three, and four. Five, five, four, and four. Two, three, and four. That's it, exactly right. Okay, now this time I'm going to just play it without calling it out so you have a chance to, to listen to your own one, two, three, and four in your head instead of me saying it. But I'm going to play so you can just uh, have something to keep you steady, to keep you going. So here we go again. Bowl them cabbage down. One, two, ready, play. That's it, very good. And again, go ahead and pause it this time and keep playing that over and over again if you would like. Go back to the beginning of that section and play the song over and over with me as much as you like to make sure you're feeling comfortable doing. And when you come back, I'm gonna show you how to start adding some harmony to your song now. Okay, once you know the song well, you may want to decide that you want to start doing a little more than just playing the one line. Now traditionally, the reason why you weren't supposed to chord the other strings is because they were set up to be drones like a bagpipe. So the first line plays like the flute part, the melody part of a bagpipe. So over here is your melody of the bagpipe. Then you got those drones making that constant sound in the background, just like the bagpipe. So that's the reason why you weren't supposed to chord the other strings and why we don't even have to chord the other strings to make it sound good. But if you've gotten to the point where you've decided the one line is getting a little too easy, you can learn how to start adding harmonies on those other strings. Now the harmony I'm going to share with you right now is the bass line harmony. And what that is, is once you know the song, and make sure you do know the song well, because once again, you don't want to be thinking too much about the song you know, and, and one, two, three, and four, and trying to remember harmonies and all. Get all that down pat first, and once you've got to that point, then you're ready to add another dimension to your song. But all the bass line harmony is, wherever your note is, like when our note is at number five, if you just follow one fret behind on the big string, so you'd be at fret number four, you got bass line harmony. So wherever you go, if you're always just one fret back, you got your bass line harmony. So that's all there is to bass line harmony. So uh, we're going to start at number five. And I like to use my thumb um, and, and then I use my pointy finger for the bass line. I'm, again, use whatever fingers feel comfortable to use. You run across 10 different dulcimer players, they're all doing something different anyway. But I just prefer to use my thumb. So start at number five and then one fret back at number four. And we'll do our bowl and cabbage down again. Two, three, and four.
And that's all there is to adding a bass line harmony. Once you know the song, wherever your note is, just follow one fret back or one number back on the bass string. And that'll be your bass line harmony anywhere you go on your dulcimer. Now, if you're ever playing a song and it makes a harmony you don't like, just get rid of it. And uh, so that's all there is to add harmony to the song. Um, okay, now we're going to pause one more time so you can practice this if you want to. And then when you come back, we're going to just have some fun on the dulcimer. All right, now we're going to just have a little bit of fun. I brought John from back behind the camera, and, and he's going to play along with us right here. And uh, this will give you the feel of what it's like when you get a chance to play with other musicians or other dulcimer players. And uh, you know how I told you how about the ad-libbing part and everything? And why John's starting off the first time just keeping the steady beat of the song, but, you know, playing the actual song. I'm going to be throwing some little ad-libs in there, and then maybe the next time John will take over and start doing some of that bass line harmony. Just to give you an idea how you can mix it up just a a little bit. So John, let's get together. We're going to start playing. Everybody wants to join along. We're going to bowl them cabbage down up to tempo and, and like I say, just have fun with it. We're going to go through this three different times. That way it'll give you plenty of time to get into the mix and get into the feel of it. So, okay. One, two, ready, play. <laughs> And just a little bit about what I was doing there anyway. If you're ever playing along with another dulcimer player and you want to just do automatic harmony with them, whatever number they're on, you go two numbers ahead of them. So like when John would be at five, I could be at seven. And John, go ahead and play your five and I'll show what I'm talking about. And then when he moves up to six, I go to eight. So if you're playing along with another dulcimer player, if you go two numbers ahead of them, you got automatic harmony wherever you go. So what I like to do a lot of times, I like to do that two ahead when I'm playing with another dulcimer player, but then sometimes I'll go back and do two of the same. So I might start off on the seven for the first two strums, but then the second two strums, I might go back to the five again. So it'd be like eight, eight, six, six, seven, seven, five, five, and so forth like that. Just play around and just have fun with it. That's the whole idea. And remember, not a lot of rules to the dulcimer. So if you're doing what sounds good to you, you're playing it right. Okay, care and maintenance of your mountain dulcimer. Now, the great thing about the dulcimer is they're really low maintenance instruments. Uh, what little tension the box has, the whole box absorbs it instead of like a guitar where the neck is out there all by itself trying to take on all that pressure. So very little maintenance you have to do. Every once in a while, you're going to need to replace a string here and then. Now, the strings are actually just guitar strings. Now, we have on hand these dulcimer string sets that Martin makes up, and we're definitely happy to mail them to you. But the strings themselves actually are guitar strings. Your big string is like a G string off of a guitar, and your little strings are like little E strings from a guitar. And uh, so just the, the big one, the G, and the little E from a guitar is what replaces them. It is handy that Martin makes up those sets, though, so in case the music store around doesn't sell individual guitar strings, you know, then you can get the three little and the big one all together. Now, since most dulcimers are set up the way we do our dulcimers, where they got these little pins in the back of your instrument, when Martin does make up those sets, they put these little loops on the end of their string like so. Now, all you have to do then is just that little loop will just you'll just lasso it over the end of the peg there. And I need to get my glasses so I can see that better, but bear with me there. And so we're gonna lasso right over the peg. Now up here at the top, it has, there's a hole in the post of your tuner. So whichever tuning knob you're wanting to put the string in, just take the end of the string, put it through the hole in the post, push most of the slack through. Cause since it is a guitar string, it's a lot longer than what you need. 
leave enough slack in the string so when you turn the knob it will wrap around that post about three or four times at least so there's no way it can slide off when you're trying to tune him up then when the end of the string comes around whatever excess is hanging over just snip off that excess with some little wire snippers or even fingernail clippers work on most of these strings because they're such a light gauge of string anyway and anyway that's all there is to putting a new string on now if you are using an actual guitar string from a guitar set instead of this little loop end on the end it's going to have a little brass knob on the end of the string and that's okay too if that's the type of string you're using with the brass knob that's all right just take the end of the string run it through the hole in the in the brass knob and then just make a lasso out of it and then just lasso that onto the pin at, at the bottom then everything else is done just exactly the same way uh, as far as for taking care of your instrument, the, the finish and so forth, uh, you don't ever have to worry about the wood drying out. The type of finish we use, you don't ever have to worry about it drying, cracking, or peeling, anything like that. But if it does get fingerprinty and you want to polish it off, uh, just whatever you would use on good furniture, like even lemon oil or even pledge for that matter, you know, just something to wipe the fingerprints off. And that's pretty much it. Uh, when you're not playing it, it doesn't hurt the dulcimer to just hang it on the wall. Uh, matter of fact, we have different wall hangers even too, uh, that uh, where you just mount the wall hanger and your dulcimer fits into the slot. And that way, uh, it, it it makes a nice decoration when you're not playing it. Oh, Joan's going to hand me one. There we go. <laughs> makes a nice decoration when you're not playing it. And that way, it's not out of sight, out of mind too. You know, to where we remember to play it more often when it's setting out. And uh, so that's just a handy way to keep it out uh, uh, when you're not playing it to help remind us to, to play it more often and like I say and it doesn't hurt it you know the way the dulcimer is constructed not only the way we build them but the way that the dulcimer is designed in the first place it has very little tension across the box but anyway that's pretty much all there is to the care and maintenance of your dulcimer uh, if you do have trouble if you're in high humidity areas or if you play outdoors a lot and the sweat from your fingers makes the strings rust up quicker. There is a product that's called Finger Ease or Fast Fret. It'll come in different forms like this. Now the Finger Ease is a spray-on that you just spray right on directly to your, to your strings. What that does is it takes the moisture off the string and, and just keeps them from rusting up. So it'll make your strings last longer. Now this other product called Fast Fret is basically the very same thing, but they put it in a stick form. So instead of spraying it on, you just rub it onto the string like so. And that'll just clean your string and it also protects it from humidity and moisture. Then they have this little rag with it that you can wipe it all down with afterwards. But like I say, if you, if you do have trouble, you know, with uh, high humidity where you're at, or if you do play outdoors a lot where you're going to be a little more sweaty and a little more exposure to the elements, then those things are handy. The other thing it does is it takes off all the friction off your string. Now, a dulcimer, since it's not under near the pressure like a guitar, it, it doesn't hurt your fingers. You don't have to develop calluses like a guitar would. Uh, matter of fact, I play all day long, and my fingers are probably a little tougher, but I've never gotten the calluses or anything like a guitar player would get playing all day long. But what does cause sore fingers on it is the friction that builds up. So that's another nice thing that, that this does for us, is it gets rid of all the friction, so that way uh, our fingers don't heat up and, and we don't get sore fingers as easily that way too. Well, basically, that's about all there is, you know, uh, and I hope you have a lot of fun playing your dulcimer. If there is anything else you did have a question about that we didn't cover in any of these instructional lessons, uh, give us a call or email us at the shop, and we'd be happy to talk with you and help you out with anything you need. But in the meantime, have fun at picking and a grinning.